we're gonna talk about scripting and recording your videos. The way that you record your videos and what you say in your videos is the most important thing, especially the beginning of the video is what's gonna draw them in and make them actually watch your videos. Now, most attorneys wanna start their video with, hi, my name is attorney Andy and I'm a family law attorney and I've been fighting for families since 1984 and blah, blah, blah. And by that point, nobody even knows what they say after that because they've already changed the video. I like starting by asking a question that is either controversial or talks about some sort of pain or something like that. So I recently did a video and I asked a question. I said, why are bad lawyers rich? It's a good question, right? Or I could ask, do you have to be a bad lawyer to be a rich lawyer? Or I could ask, did you know that, pro did you know that law school programmed you to be poor? Here's three ways they did it. So these are interesting, like he was kind of interested in what I said after that in that video, right? So the point is, is that you've got to say something that kind of jars them a little bit, right? So who has a topic for a video that they want to, that they want to uh, talk about? Like, let's, let's come up with a hook together. What is it? Child custody? Okay. So who, who, tell me about child custody. Like what's, what's, what would be a question about child custody? Uh, how can dads get child, how can dads win a custody battle? Okay. That's a good question. So, um, you can ask, so, so when you're creating content, there's two things to think about. There's away from pain and toward pleasure, right? Now, when you're creating a hook, you always want your hook to be leading them away from pain because strangers are more likely to allow somebody that they don't know to lead them away from pain than toward pleasure. So imagine you're walking downtown, like a downtown area, somebody's passing out $100 bills. Say free $100 bills, free $100 bills. Is anyone gonna just walk up and just take that $100 bill and just think, oh cool, that's a perfectly reasonable thing for somebody to be doing, right? You're gonna be skeptical, right? Cause I'm 40 years old. I've never seen somebody just passing out free $100 bills. So you'd be like, okay, yeah, what's the catch? Like I'm probably gonna get it and it's gonna have that whole uh, Jesus loves you thing on it. You know, like how they, how, how they drop them and everything. So. <laughs> so I'm like, it's, I'm, I'm skeptical. I don't believe that this person's actually going to be helping me. Now, imagine you're walking downtown and you trip and you fall and you bump your head and your head's bleeding and a stranger runs up to you and gives you like a towel and, put, and they help you on your feet and they, they help you up and they help you sit down and everything and they're holding and they say, give me your phone. And you hand them your cell phone. You're probably going to hand the phone unlocked so that they can call somebody to help, right? You're going to let that stranger help you in that situation, right? Because people are more likely to allow strangers to allow them out of pain, away from pain, than toward pleasure. So the same thing with your messaging. Your messaging should be getting them away from pain rather than toward pleasure. So if it's child custody with a father, there's two ways you could take that approach. It could be, here are three ways that fathers can get more time with their kids. It's good, right? Um, but if we're taking the away from pain, here are three ways fathers can avoid losing a relationship with their child. Here's three ways that mothers trick fathers into losing their relationship with their children, right? So there's lots of different nuances and lots of different angles that you can take for, with that one thing. But you wanna think about how can I, when, whenever you create content, you wanna think, am I leading them away from pain or am I leading them toward pleasure? Right now, conversely, if you're talking to people that you already know, so if we're talking to a warm audience, if I'm talking to everybody in this room, I'm going to talk to you guys toward pleasure because once you trust somebody, then you will allow somebody to lead to, then, then you will allow them to lead you toward pleasure. So it's very nuanced, but it's, 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 it's very important. So the default you should lean into though, is leading them away from pain. Right. And it's, it's very, it's a very, it's, it's subtle but it's very important. So the hook is the most important part of the video. And if you look at how a video is structured, any of your content is structured. And the cool thing is that once you understand this format, you can do this over and over and over again, and it's really easy. So if you structure your video, you look at your video like this, it's gonna be hook up top here. And then this big section is gonna be either a story or value and then at the bottom it's going to be offer so hook 
the hook has got to be something very, 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 very juicy, right? Something to, to capture their capture their attention right away. It shouldn't be your name. It shouldn't be your qualifications. It shouldn't be like that. It should be talking about what is it that they want and you know what pain are you going to lead them away from. So that's the hook. The second part is going to be the story. Now, the story is the meat of the actual video. And the reality is, is that stories perform way better than just facts and figures. So if you can tell a story, if you can weave a story into it, especially if it's a story about, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a client. It can be a story that you heard from another attorney. It can be an anecdote. If you turn it into a story, people will remember stories way better than they'll just remember you just talking to them, right? So you, what you want to do is you want to actually tell a story that will support the hook and deliver some value. And then finally, you have your offer. Now, your offer should not be call me today for a free consultation, right? Because what what happens is people watch afternoon TV and they see all these attorneys that are always saying, call me today for a free consultation. So that's kind of like the standard thing. So you want to be different. So what I like doing is I like talking to the camera like I'm talking to a friend. So I still will have a call to action. But what I'll say is instead of call, instead of call me for a free consultation, what you want to do is something like imagine you were talking to like a college roommate and your college roommate got a DUI or got into a car accident or is going through a divorce or whatever it was like this is your, your friend from college, right? Would you say, uh, oh, yeah, sorry to hear you're going through that. Call me Friday for a free consultation. Or would you say, OK, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, send me over your information. I'll take a look and uh, I'll see what we can need to do to help you. And if I can't help you, um, you know, I'll, I'll find somebody that can take care of you. Right. Like you can say that same thing and people will contact you and it still means it still results in a consultation. So you can end your video um, with, you know, and that's why you shouldn't post videos on social media uh, if you're going through a divorce. So if you have any questions about a social media post for, you know, about, about a social media post while you're going through a divorce or just even a question about the, the, the legal process uh, of, you know, custody or anything like that, just shoot me a message, shoot me a text message, give me a call. Happy to answer your questions. And if I can't help you, I'll point in the direction of somebody who can, right? So when you do that, you're encouraging people to reach out. And when you do that, then you can parlay that into a consultation, which then parlays into a client, right? So the soft consultation, the soft call to action, I call it works really, really well. So does anyone want to see a demo of kind of the hook story offer in process? It kind of, kind of just see a demo of me doing a hook story offer with somebody's video. All right. Who has a video topic that I can, that I can, I can, uh, work on. Somebody raise your hand. Who's got it? How come in divorces you always lose the whole business? Obviously they don't, right? That's the point. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, but you know, how come every time you go through a divorce, you lose the business too? Okay. Tell me a story where that, where that's relevant to that. I mean, from a legal perspective, at least in Florida law, personal goodwill is non-marital. So in valuing a business, the portion of the business that's attributable to just the business owner isn't something available to the Okay, spouse. hold on a second. Can I coach you for a second? Sure. All right. So I want you to speak English to me. Cause because <laughs> okay, you gotta here, here and this is this is really important. I'm not just picking on you, but this no, is actually please really pick important. On me. It's okay. Remember that the average American reads at an eighth grade level, right? A confused mind always says no. So we have to put that in oh. terms that the average American can understand, right? Like even a, even a business owner, even an entrepreneur, does anyone, has anyone read Five Star Attorney, my book, Five Star Attorney? Did, any, did you guys find it very easy to read? Do you know why? Because I wrote it at an eighth grade level. I literally put it in a software that, and I made sure that it said grade eight. And this is a book written for attorneys, right? Because I know that a confused mind always says no. So if I want to make sure that the information that I'm putting out there is actually consumed, it has to be done in a way that it's very, very easily consumable. Right. right? That's exactly what I need assistance with is how okay. to get this fairly complex concept yeah. to be, you know, something that can be reiterated. Tell me a, a story. Way. Tell me an actual story. Like, tell me a story that this has happened to. So like, just tell, just tell me a story real quick about a client that it's happened to. Um, I represented a physician in a divorce and he was very afraid that his wife who just helped out with the human resources portion of his business. So mm -hmm. she thought herself also a business owner cause she was married. Yeah. And then we dropped the bomb that she can't be a business owner of a, of a, um, a medical practice. Okay and the business doesn't have as much value as you think that's available for 
in the divorce or your marital estate because okay. it's attributable just to the doctor's reputation. Okay, and what happened? She got maybe a hundred thousand dollars from his two point eight million dollar medical practice. Okay, so and you represented the husband who was the physician. Yeah. He was able to keep his business. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. So paid her out with one check he had available. What did he say? Paid her out with one check, didn't have to even make payments. Okay, there you go. Actually, I like that ending of the story. Okay, cool. So that story, like what you just told me, like the first thing you told me, was that basically a summary of the same thing that you just, of uh, the story? Or was that- They was are that identical. Like, what did you say? The legal concept. That was, was the legal concept the and you just told yeah. me the English version. Yeah. But, okay. So- <laughs> it's funny, and I, I know I'm picking on you, but it's it's true. But like you got to remember, like, cause cause like I'm I'm not a lawyer, but I do work with lawyers all the time. So right. I think that I'm smart, kind of. And I still didn't know what the hell you were talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so 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 that's just a good reminder is that you just always want to remember that you're talking to somebody. Like I always say, Eli five. Explain it like I'm five, right? Yeah. So, all right. So I'm gonna film a video real quick. And I'm going to show you how I would do a video for this actual practice. Um, and this, with, if I was going to uh, film a video for this, with, with this hook story offer format, right? Um, and I also want to show you guys that while my first video took, took eight hours, I'm now able, because I've done this over and over again, you get to the point where somebody can just give you information that isn't even yours and you can just create a video out of thin air for it, right? So let me show you how I'd actually do this as a hook story offer format using that hook and that story. Step one, you're gonna pull out your phone, right? And you're gonna look at your phone, you're gonna smile. And then you're gonna hit record, and then you're gonna do the hook, and then you're gonna tell a story. And then what's the third thing you're gonna do? Offer, all right, cool. And I'm sorry, what is your name? Aaron. Aaron, okay, cool. Why do entrepreneurs always lose their businesses whenever they're going through a divorce? My name is attorney Aaron and I'm a family law attorney who works with entrepreneurs and I'm gonna show you why that's actually not the case. You see, we had a attor or, an attorney, we had a doctor come to me recently and unfortunately he was getting a divorce. And he was really concerned that he was going to lose his family practice, the practice that he worked so hard that he poured his blood, sweat and tears into because of the fact that his wife, the soon to be ex-wife, also worked in the business. Now, the interesting thing is, is that she worked in human resources, but he's a doctor. His business, his practice was based off of his personal reputation and also his doctor degree. The fact that, what's called medical degree? His medical degree. Now, she had the misconception that because she worked in the business, she owned a very substantial part of the business. And that's actually a common misconception that spouses actually have. The reality is, is that there's lots of different contributing factors that goes into who contributed what to the business and how much that business is worth. Now, because of this, we were able to weigh those factors, the fact that he's a doctor and that the business is built on his reputation and she worked in human resources, which is very important, but not a critical element to the business. And we were able to work out a settlement that allowed him to write a single check Check, keep his business and walk away. Now, I want you, I'm telling you the story because I want you to understand that just because you're going through a divorce does not necessarily mean by default that you're going to lose your business and that your spouse is going to get half. It's very, very important that you understand the intricacies and the nuances that go into running a business and also dividing assets during a divorce. Now, this is something that is very, very difficult to explain in just a YouTube video, but I want you to know that there are options out there and it's really, really important that you talk talk to a professional who actually has experience so that you don't get run over the coals in this entire situation. So listen, just so you know, you're not necessarily going to lose your business, but if you do have questions about how to divide a business in a divorce or how to divide assets during a divorce, I'm happy to help. Leave a comment below this video or call me at the office. My cell phone number is 123-123-1234 and I'm happy to help you. And if I can't help you, I will certainly point you in the direction of somebody that can. I hope this video was helpful. Enjoy running your business, move on with your life, and I will talk to you soon. So. Now here's the thing, I stumbled over my words a few times and like probably I could do that better, right? But you see how the general format, like that was, I mean really that would be a usable video. So, and if you do that every single day and like if I, you know, obviously I'm not as well versed in the information as, as you are, but that's all it takes. Like it doesn't have to be a very crazy, 
well-researched well video. Like, what was that? <laughs> um, you don't have to, uh, you know, you don't have to do all that. It's, it's basically just that hook story offer format. Do you have any topics for estate planning where people think about it forever to create some kind of urgency? Uh, yeah, well, so estate planning, you have to remember, I was talking to somebody about this last night. Estate planning, you have to remember, they don't want the estate plan. They don't want a will. They don't want a trust. What they want is the effect that a will or a trust or an estate plan actually has, right? So, for example, a great title for an estate plan is, you know, how to make sure that your money, assets, and kids go where you want them to should you die. Or how to how to make sure so that's that's toward pleasure. So away from pain would be how to make sure that a judge how to make sure that the government doesn't decide where your kids' money and assets go after you die. I remember a really good story uh, that a client uh, Laura Heard told me once. You guys want me to just film the video like I'm Laura so you can see it? Here's how to avoid losing child custody from one single social media post. My name is attorney Laura Heard, and I represent families all over the state in family law matters. Now, I was working with a client one time and she was trying to keep custody of her daughter. Now, she didn't realize this, but she did something that seemed very, very innocent that actually ended up costing her custody of her child that people don't even think about. And I'm filming this video because I want to tell you about it so that you can avoid making this mistake as well. So she posted a selfie on social media and that selfie caused all kinds of problems. Now, what can be so bad about a selfie, you're probably asking. Well, the problem wasn't actually that she took the selfie. The problem was what was behind her in the selfie. You see, she was standing in front of a picture of a naked woman. Now, she didn't even realize that the picture was there, but she took the selfie, she posted it on social media. Two weeks later, we come into court and there's a giant cardboard cutout of this selfie highlighting with a big circle, a big red circle with the poster behind my client of the naked woman. Now, this didn't look very good and it helped support the opposing counsel's argument that my client was an unfit mother and the judge believed this simply because she put a selfie up. So, what I'm trying to tell you is that it doesn't matter how innocent you think something may be. Stay off of social media if you are in a legal dispute because you never know what could be inadvertently taken the wrong way. Now, because I'm an amazing attorney, I was able to fight this and keep, keep custody of my, my client's child. But most attorneys out there aren't as good as me and they probably wouldn't be able to do this. So, Please, 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 for the love of God, stay off of social media. And if you have any questions about uh, a family law issue, about a child custody issue, about divorce, anything like that, feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to help you. Again, my name is Laura Hurd. Thank you so much. Stay off social media, right? So, and that's, that's exactly what that video was like, right, Laura? Like, that was, that was perfectly right. So, but my point is, is that you see how that format can be done very, very easily, right? And, it's, it's, and, and, and you see how it's more entertaining when I'm telling a story rather than saying statute 1774 of the penal code says that blah, blah, you know what I mean? Like, like when you tell a story about something like that, then people can actually picture it actually happening in their brain. Is it a, a done is better than perfect? Like just throw stuff out there? Yeah. Or, or, or like, cause when we said it's like, I'm trying to, in my mind I start going, is this still value? Is this still yes. too friendly? Is anyone worried about stumbling like, uh, and um, and uh, and all that stuff? Have you ever heard me talk? That's like every other word. My middle name is actually uh. So um, I just did it. Okay, so there's a really cool software called Descript. So it's like description, but Descript. And I'm gonna actually give you guys a demo of Descript later, but it has this one button you click that says remove filler words. And it literally removes the ums and the uhs and the you knows and like all that stuff. It, it removes blank spaces. It's absolutely amazing. I'm gonna give you a demo of Descript later. That'll solve all your problems right there. But done is better than perfect. Really, you don't find your voice until probably video 100, maybe video 200, depending on things, right? So you are really just going through and just practicing. And every single video that you're doing right now, when you're stumbling and all that type of stuff, you're just practicing. And eventually what will happen is you will continue going, continue going, and you'll just get better. Now, one thing that I've learned that I'm not great at, but when I think about it, I can do it. Instead of saying, um, if I'm really conscious about it, I can just pause. So instead of saying um or uh, I just pause for a second and then I don't say um and then I keep going. So that's just something else. It's like a little tip you can use.